Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today we're going to be putting a set of Max Peating Rods coilovers in my new winter beater. So this car is a four-door EG Civic and it has a turbo single cam in it. It's just a D15B, but uh, I'll show you guys more of this car coming soon. Uh, but like I said, I just kind of got it for a winter beater so I don't have to drive my truck all the time uh, back and forth to the shop. Uh, a little gas saver never hurts. So, and it's turboed, so it'll be a little fun street car. So anyways, I uh, bought a set of coilovers from Max Peating Rods for my Integra initially, but I think I'm actually gonna be going with something a little different on the Integra. So I figured I'm gonna use these coilovers on something I'm going to drive a lot and uh, kind of really test them out and show you guys how they are. I did run a set of Max Peating Rods coilovers on my red EK hatch with the Turbo B20 VTEC quite a while ago. If you guys uh, remember that video, be sure to leave a like and comment and say you've been here that long. Uh, but, so that car, I had the Max Peating Rods coils in and I really liked them. Uh, they rode really good, they had good adjustability, the dampening all seemed to work, and uh, overall I really liked them. But for a drag race application, I think they were a little too soft uh, because I would get quite a bit of wheel hop with that car and I ended up breaking a couple like differentials and axles and transmissions and I can never really get it to 60 foot that good at the drag strip. And I'm kind of thinking that the spring rates on these Max Peden coils were just a little too soft for that setup. Uh, you know, trying to go 10 seconds in the quarter mile or whatever with a drag slick and a skinny. I think a really stiff setup, like what I have on the Integra right now, uh, like the blocks coilovers, are kind of uh, a little bit better to kind of keep the rear end from squatting down uh, and then just kind of keeping the front end planted. These coils probably work great for like, you know, just kind of cruising around, hitting some back roads kind of thing, and that's all this little four door is gonna do, so I think these coils will be perfect. Um, so, my, don't mind the mess. Uh, I've been out here working freaking every day, so the bench is a little dirty right now. But I got the coils up on the bench and uh, just kind of inspecting them. And I noticed that one of the coilovers, uh, when I got them out of the box, it was leaking. So you can see some oil here on the ground. And uh, I inspected each coil and I found one of them that was leaking. So. This is my replacement. Max Peating Rods actually sent it to me for free uh, because this one was leaking. So probably kind of hard to see because I cleaned it all off, but there was some like uh, shock oil coming out of this seal right here. So they sent me a new one and I'm just swapping over the parts and the spring and the top hat for this uh, spring or for this strut. And while I had it off, I was like, well, let's, let's kind of see how they are for dampening. So this is me kind of pushing up and down on the shock, and that's at full loose. So if we go to tight, turning these clicks all the way to the right, which I think tightens things up, much harder to push down and much slower to come back. Like I have to put my mite into that to get it to compress in and then the rebound is also a lot slower so when we have it at full loose you can see it's much much easier to push down and it springs right back up so that's going to give you a lot more of the street so like when the coil is at full loose it's probably going to ride a lot better because you have the shock actually doing what it's supposed to do on like a normal road, absorb bumps. That's why it can react like that, because it, it's supposed to sit there and absorb the bumps. Where when you're racing or when you're, you know, cornering really hard, you don't want that to, to lean in, like you don't want the body roll and the soft suspension. So you can go through and tighten the clicks on the top of the strut. And then it'll kind of keep the car planted a little bit better going around the corner. So like, when you tighten them all the way up, like I was saying, sorry, I'm just really kind of scattered right now. Can't really think straight, uh, but I'm trying to explain this to you guys the best I can. Tightening up the strut is going to uh, 
per, or give it less roll in the corners and just overall be a stiffer ride in general and keep the tire shoved into the ground. Uh, like I said, when you have it loose, it's gonna absorb the bumps a little better and it's kind of nice that the dampening actually works on these coils because man, they're cheap. Like, I think they're like 300 bucks or something for all four. And they have dampening and ride height adjustability and uh, preload adjustability on the spring. So the preload on the spring, these are a, I don't even know what spring rate they are, but you can also change the way the car acts by uh, setting the preload on the spring and you can shift weight around the car. So like you can have more, you know, weight put on one side, you know, and that's kind of what the, the preload is for on the coils is, you know, you can have more weight, say, on the passenger side where you're not sitting if it's a race car. So you can have kind of even balance on all four tires. So I think to properly set preload, though, you need a corner scale or a scale that's on all four tires uh, in order to get it set up perfectly. So for now, I'm just going to set the preload, you know, pretty much how they had them out of the box. I'm not going to touch that, and I'm just going to... Uh, install it and I'm not gonna be slammed uh, I will be lowered a little bit but right now this car is pretty low and it's on a set of blocks coils like I was saying I, I might have said I had blocks coils on this I was lying this car has blocks tuner series coilovers and man they are so stiff like I damn near need a chiropractic appointment every time I drive this car so just for, just to show, I'm gonna push down on the car and you'll see how bouncy it is and how, how it just, it rides like crap. My Integra has like some blown uh, Skunk 2 struts and like eBay sleeves and it doesn't do that. So you can see on the Integra, when I push down on the suspension, it just settles right away. Like it'll, it'll bounce for a second and then stop. It doesn't continuously bounce and then stop like the four door and that's kind of a good indicator. Like you can just do that bounce test and you're gonna know if you're gonna need to schedule a chiropractic appointment you know, the next day. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm gonna get these blocks, tuner series coils out of this car and we're gonna install the max peating rods coils. And uh, I'm gonna give my impression, even though I kinda already did on the <clears throat> first set that I did a video on quite a while ago. Um, I don't assume these ones are gonna be any different. But I do think these guys are stepping up their game a little bit uh, and helping out the guys on a budget. Um, Obviously, if you have a full track-oriented car, these will work for a weekend warrior, I'm sure, but, uh, you know, dedicated, competitive, full race car, uh, I might consider something a smidge stiffer than what these are. Uh, like I said, these are good for like a street car and a weekend warrior. Uh, but we'll put them in and I'll go take the car for a ride and let you guys know what I really think. Alrighty guys, so I got the front coilovers out of the car and I have them here on the ground next to the front coils for the max peating rods that I'm putting in. So I uh, just kind of compared the height of the two and I am going a little bit longer uh, ride height on the max peating rods just because this is going to be a winter car so I don't want to get stuck in the snow or bottom out uh, the exhaust because when I got this car it already had a broken flex joint on the exhaust because it's so low so i'd like to go a little bit higher on the ride height and then i did set my preload on here to be a little bit softer preload on the driver's side because when i sit in the car it's naturally going to put weight on the spring and the preload should be about the same as this one so i just went a little less on the preload on the driver's side than i did the passenger side at least i think that's how uh i should do it uh just Obviously, like I said, there's no, I don't have a scale, any, ugh, I got some dirt, whatever. Uh, I don't have a corner balance scale, but with me sitting in the car, I would assume where that coil is, I want a little less preload because my weight 
of the driver is going to naturally preload that spring a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna throw them in and uh, yeah, didn't take long to get them out. Uh, probably like 10 minutes, not even. Kind of nice because this car did already have coilovers in it, so it's a lot easier to get them out. I uh, just took the 14 mil bolt out of the strut fork and then the bottom bolt that holds the fork onto the control arm, took those out, the top two up here, and bam, she came out. So next, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna repeat the process and put the new ones in the car. And then I'll move on to doing the rear. All right, so I got the driver's side on. Now I'm gonna throw the passenger side on. Uh, take the two nuts off the top. Feed the coil over up into the, the engine bay. Lining the two nuts up with the two nuts or the two holes up here. And uh, yeah. All right, so now that I got the coil hung up in there, now I'm going to install this spacer. So this is like an adapter for the lower fork to fit these coilovers. These coilovers are pretty universal, as in they fit EF, DA, Integra, Civic, EG, EK, whatever, uh, because the EF uses a smaller spindle mount, or like shock mount down here onto the right there is smaller on an EF so you wouldn't use these but on an EG or a DC Integra or an EK you need to put these sleeves in so there's a lip on it make sure the lip is on the top so it has something to stop it when it goes down into the the strut fork give it a couple tap tap roos It should look something like this when you're ready to put it in. So next, uh, we're gonna try to get this to slide up over this, but it's a lot easier to attach the lower onto the control arm down here first. So I'm gonna put the bolt through on the bottom and then I'm gonna use the transmission jack. You can use a floor jack if you're doing this in your driveway and just jack up on the bottom ball joint or like the spindle somewhere so you can raise this up and shove the coil into the strut fork. Now I'm just gonna make sure that the collars, the adjustment collars are all tight. So I'm gonna use these little spanner wrenches they gave me. Uh, if you don't have these, I've just used like a screwdriver and a hammer to like tap it tight. Uh, sometimes that works better than using these, but we'll use them. There we go guys, the front is all done. I just gotta put the tires back on and then I gotta tighten the bolts up in the engine bay. And then I'm probably going to set the dampening like in the middle to start and I'm gonna kind of see how it feels if it's too stiff I'll loosen it and if it's too spongy I'll I'll tighten it up so we'll see uh, how they go I'm gonna get the rear done and hopefully be able to take this thing for a test drive before it gets dark happy daylight savings it's getting dark at like five o'clock now so the rear is fairly simple there's just a bolt on the bottom and then two on the top. And this thing will just like fall down. You rip it out, put the new one in. This one, these shouldn't take too long and there's not really a, there's not really a whole lot of uh, craziness that happens in the back. They're a lot easier. You gotta pop the trunk and get the struts through the trunk area. You gotta peel the carpet back. Uh, but it shouldn't be too difficult, I'm hoping. 
and I'm going to set the ride height about the same amount higher as I did in the front that I did the rear. So hopefully uh, all goes well. Oh, also, this is a lot more difficult, or it can be more difficult, doing it on a stock vehicle because the bolts haven't been out. They're rusty, uh, especially the rear. Lower control arm bolts, they a lot of times they seize inside the bushings of the control arm. So be careful, use some penetrating oil and an impact. I don't usually like to use a breaker bar because the bolts will just snap. The impact will kind of shock stuff free a lot of times. But this setup, or this car, already has a bunch of suspension parts on it. So uh, that means it's been taken apart before and somebody else struggled. And I don't have to. I say that now and then I'll probably end up kicking myself in the ass in about five minutes. But hopefully it goes great. Alright, got the rear coils in. Now I'm about to throw the tires on and take it for a test drive. After I get these all locked down again, like I did on the front. I set the dampening so these coils have 25 clicks of adjustment. I went 15 in the front and 10 in the back, and I'm going to start there and see how that is. All right, so first test drive pulling out of the parking lot at my shop. This parking lot is not smooth. There's a lot of bumps and stuff. And, uh, Definitely feel the bumps in the parking lot, for sure. Look at that sunset. So I just went over a bump that I go over every day. And, uh... It's definitely a lot more tolerable of a ride. And I could probably make it even better. Just went over another bump. I don't know if I'm really even moving in the seat. There's, there was a good bump. Not shitty. It's not shitty. The rides pretty decent. I could tolerate this as a daily driver. And handling? It seems to handle pretty good too. Obviously I'm not on a, I'm not in Mexico or anything right now so I'll have to uh, get back with you guys on how it handles after I tune the suspension a little bit more too because I feel like it sits a little lower on the driver's side and I maybe screwed up doing that preload because it probably is causing the ride height to be lower on the driver's side ever so slightly. So I did bring a tape measure and I'm going to measure all four corners after I drive it for a couple minutes and see how level it is. But honestly, just cruising. Let go of the wheel, straight as can be. And I like how it sits. I'll have to show you here. I'll pull over. And that, that bump right there is usually pretty bad because it's a bump mid-corner. And usually like them mid-corner bumps like that, uh, they really kind of bounce you around. Yeah, this thing is like way more tolerable. I didn't even want to drive it before. It was so bumpy. It is a gorgeous November day in Wisconsin. I think it was like 62 degrees today. So we're getting spoiled up here. Late Indian summer as they call it, I think. So here she is, uh, once my camera focuses. 
Wow, come on. I love this Canon G7X, but man, it takes forever to focus. There we go. So, yeah, not sitting too bad. I'm gonna measure all four corners quick, like I was telling you guys. 23 and a half. Just as I assumed, the driver's side is a quarter inch lower than the passenger side. So I may adjust it, I may just fucking leave it. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, putting these coilovers in. I would recommend them, especially for the money, because there's not really a coil on the market that rides this good for that amount of money. And uh, yeah, and that has working dampening adjustment. So I would recommend, be sure to go check out Max Peating Rods and uh, go pick up some of their products. They have a ton of stuff for sale. So also, uh, hopefully you guys like the four door. I'm gonna be uh, just daily driving this car through the winter and uh, probably do some ice racing with it maybe. And uh, maybe we'll throw a rod in it because it is a D15 and uh, they're not that strong. So yeah, I'm gonna tune it on E85 and some other stuff coming soon, but that's going to be it for now, guys. Have a great night and a better tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you later.